Grubsmith, you have been challenged. You will go to Morocco. Uh, there you will be given five tasks. Should you fail one of these tasks, we will make you do something really horrid. I forfeit to eat two inches of a lizard for every challenge I fail to complete. The more you fail, the more unpleasant it will become. You have five days. Get going. You think of Morocco and you probably think of two things. Hippies trying to smoke hashish and elderly homosexuals trying to get off with young boys. Either way, they say, you can get brown in minutes around here. I was in the busy Medina in Marrakesh. My first problem was finding my translator. All I knew was that she'd be wearing a Muslim outfit and would be waving a silver envelope. Ooh. Nearly everyone here is dressed in traditional Arab dress. So how am I supposed to find one woman in a caftan? I don't know. There are no street names here and they're not too big on zebra crossings either. We spent most of the time trying not to run people over as they wandered through a market that hasn't really changed in 3,000 years. You can see why this place is popular with hippies. You feel as though you're on drugs just walking around. There's noise, smell, colour. There's one. There's the envelope. All right, all right, all right. Fantastic. Beautiful. Saida. How are you? A pleasure. Bingo. I've got it. Let's see what Morocco has got in store for me for my first challenge. Challenge one. Pull out a tooth. Now I knew why I'd been told to meet Saida here. The marketplace is where many local craftsmen ply their trade, and that even includes dentists, apparently. Mind you, it's about as far removed from Harley Street as you can get. They even try to attract customers by displaying the fruits of their hideous labour. Good Lord. Some of these teeth are in terrible condition, probably because they've been taken out with these. Does he just pull them out like that? Very, very nasty. Soon we had a victim. Step forward, young man. Very brave Moroccan gentleman. I'm like the beautiful nurse. But it all began to get very confusing. Too thin at the moment. Which I think he's got the wrong end of the stick. I don't want to actually give someone a tooth. I want to take their tooth out. Oh, he's now done. That's that is a beautiful piece of acting. I want a, re a real tooth. A, re a real tooth. Would you like a free tooth extraction, sir? You might as well let me have a crack. They can always be made more perfect. Smile to the camera, sir. Go on, open up. He has perhaps already been to a Moroccan street dentist. After nearly an hour of crossroads quality acting, I was starting to get increasingly frustrated. He doesn't want. Why not? Why not? Because it's not possible. It then transpired that it's just been made illegal to pull teeth in public. The tourists don't like it. I'd hit a brick wall, so I decided to put the teeth on ice for now and open challenge two. Challenge two. Charmer Cobra. Unpleasant again, but at least I had a good chance of success with this one. I'd nearly trodden on some snakes getting to the bogus teeth fiasco. They seem to keep them under a tambourine. <laughs> Not the safest way, especially as there is a hole in them. Oh my fucking god! Look at the size of that, it's a cobra down there. That is the real deal. And it looks as though I'm gonna have to be uh, has to be getting a little bit close to these fellas. My instructor was the James Galway of the Medina, and he told me it was the swaying motion of the fluty thing which charmed the snakes. Once I'd proved I could bust some moves, he gave me a music lesson. Okay. Open, 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 open. So, softly. Softly, apparently, is the way to play this, as opposed to fucking nervously. Well, I don't know if it was charm, but it didn't actually bite anyone. Dig that crazy bee bop bee. Oh dear, can I, t can I touch the cobra? Unfortunately, it was so easy that I became ridiculously overconfident. Yeah, in a minute, but can I touch the cobra? 
Yeah. Touch the cobra. You. Touch the cobra. I was thinking more. I was thinking more of it. More of the rear of the cobra. Cobra. Very very dangerous. Oh, cobra. At this point, it may seem like I've lost the power of speech, but the truth is, I'm more of a cat person. I'm very nervous about that. Oh, he's taking the tongue out. Oh my God, he's putting a fucking cobra around my neck. I am so unhappy about this. Look at the size of that fucker. Cobra. Oh, he's putting it down his shirt. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. Oh, my goodness. See, what happened? Very, very nice, yes. Oh, good. Very unpleasant. Very unpleasant. I must have lost about two stone just in pure adrenaline sweat and, uh, to be honest, flatulence doing that. End of day one. I'd managed to triumph in the face of the cobra, but I still hadn't pulled a tooth. I had four days left, and if I failed any of my challenges, I'd have to pay a nasty penalty. All they told me was that it would have a local flavour. And the next morning, I found out exactly what they meant. My forfeit in Morocco is to eat two inches of a lizard for every challenge I fail to complete. So I've come to the lizard district um, to try and find one that looks quite juicy. Is it edible? <laughs> I have five challenges, so it has to be at least ten inches long. I'm saying this fellow is at least that. Have you ever eaten a lizard yourself? He's eaten a lizard. And does it taste good? What does it taste like? Chicken, lamb? Like chicken. They always say that. Even cannibals, when they hear what it's like, taste it a bit like chicken. I'm going to call this lizard Hurley after Liz Hurley. It's a very beautiful creature and I'm going to try very hard to succeed at all my challenges because I don't want little Hurley to bite the dust. But now, time to get back to that tooth. Having failed to score a bit of dentistry in the market the other day, I've come back because we found someone in dire need of having a tooth removed. It's Trey Trey Mal, he says. So I'm going to go along. I've been practising. Actually, I haven't, but he doesn't know that. So I'm going to have a good old tug under the aegis of the local tooth doctor. This is the dentist shop. The dentist appears to be wearing an Everton shirt, which I take as a good omen. They are the toffees, and toffees often cause fillings. I'm going to go in. Everton. This is the dentist room. Uh, I think it doubles probably as a barber as well, judging by some of the products we've got up here. Got the uh, ghetto blaster playing out. A bit of soft rock. Here's some sign of the uh, dentist's other job. He's a barber. So, Abdul, oui. how many teeth have you had removed in your life? <laughs> the entire top row. <laughs> so, just the entire top row and four. The, the dentist bottom. put on his gown, which I have to say was I worryingly know, flecked with blood. Hardly surprising, oh, really, yeah. as he also performs circumcisions. Fillings and foreskins. I bet the kids just love him. They're not used to the standard of hygiene, I don't think. Thought I was wasting some perfectly good white spirit, which is going to be used for hairdressing. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Who uh, ain't okay. <laughs> Once again, the standards of Moroccan dental hygiene seem to have let them down a little bit. We're going to get in there and have a probe. This is, it's a bit like a sort of brattle, something you might use in carpentry. We're just loosening underneath it now. It's quite wobbly. Here's the uh, pink water you spit into. Oh. Abdul actually did a greeny. <laughs> I can see in the mirror. Abdul is uh, clutching his chair like a madman in the electric seat. Definitely a bit of movement. Abdul's doing a little bit of moaning and sighing now as the probe is going in under the gum just to really work that tooth out. He's now having his mouth burrowed into with a sharp spike with a little bit of claret. He's got the pliers round the tooth now. It's cracking a bit. I'm actually feeling quite queasy just watching this. Let me have a crack. I gave a sharp tug. 
That is the tool they've been using. Adol's holding it. Look at it. It's just a screwdriver. Oh, man, he's a happy man. I think he'd be happy with just two sets of those. <laughs> Two. Smith 2, Morocco 0. It's good news for me and it's good news for Hurley, the lizard. It's not everyone who gets to go to bed with Liz Hurley. But luckily I've done really well at my challenges so far, so my lizard is still in one piece. If you remember, I've got to eat two inches of lizard for every challenge I fail. So far, two out of two, so that's safe and that's safe. I reckon if I succeed at just another two more challenges, Hurley's going to be okay. The most she's going to lose is a bit of tail. In which case, I may have to marry the lovely Liz. Beautiful. Challenge three. Attend a camel mating. Oh, I want to get off. Ow, 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 ow. For my next challenge, I had to watch two camels having sex, so we headed off for the Sahara Desert. Perhaps aware that I might have to eat her if I failed any of my tasks, my lizard Hurley was fattening up faster than Opera Winfrey. Then suddenly, by the side of the road, we beheld a mysterious sight. I decided to investigate further. Hello, Shepherd. How do you do? Why are your goats up a tree? As you go further south in Morocco, most of the people you meet are Berber. They don't speak much Arabic, so it took Saida a while to translate. But we got there eventually. They send the goats up into the trees. The goat goes into the thistly branches where no human hand can reach and finds one of these. It chews it, but it only digests the, the green outer casing and the nut itself will come out in their crap. So they'll go down here They'll, go, they'll find a turd, do it with their fingers, and then pull out a couple, oh, a couple of nuts. There's a hazelnut in every bite, and then these are turned into oil, and they can use that to fry their bacon and eggs. I'm now about to eat something that has come out of a goat's arse. <laughs> what? Don't eat that. Right. We're heading up into the Atlas Mountains, where, of course, Charles Atlas came from. These would normally be snow-capped peaks, but because it hasn't rained for two years, they're dry as a bone. The south of Morocco is really barren and arid, perfect for camels. But this was the tail end of the mating season, so there was no guarantee we'd find any horny ones. The journey was hellish, with blistering heat terrifying drops and one hairpin turn after another. As a result, I soon discovered that Moroccan food tastes pretty much the same on the way out as it does on the way in. After a night sleeping in the car, we finally arrived at the Sahara. My translator Saida had arranged a rendezvous with some Bedouin cameleers. I think these could possibly be my camels. One of those is the lucky stud. We're out in the big sandy. Here are some gentlemen who I believe are my cameleers. How do you do? How are you? Lovely to meet you. These are your magnificent animals. Beautiful things they are too. This one's the stud, apparently. This is the big bad boy. He's going to be possibly servicing this white one later on. So the mating commenced. Look at the size of this fella. The females have their front legs tied together for sex, a bit like in S and M. He, oh, whoa! My God, I've only just turned up, and he is mounting the camel. It's one hump or two. She's getting an extra on this evening. Good Lord. Right. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed it. He's gone sideways. It's a disaster. Open goal, keeper beaten. All he had to do was stroke it at home. And he stepped over, and he was no longer in alignment. It's a, having another go. It's a bit like trying to land something on a very, very narrow aircraft carrier. You've got to bring it in at the right angle. Bring it at the right angle. What a handsome beast. Look at that. A little blonde one is uh, one of the Appleton sisters. And the big ugly one is, is Liam Gallagher. So, so we think the lady camel is in heat. I mean, we're all in heat. We're in the bloody Sahara Desert. But the male one can't get it up at the moment. No. 
Is that because right? it's very hot. It's too hot for it? Yeah, it's so hot. So we decided to go back to the Bedouin right, camp and let the camels like cool off before having another oh, crack at it. Even easier. I decided to get Blondie in the mood by giving her a damn good ride myself. Hold on here, like that. Wait, wait, see, Beautiful. Now, I've got a feeling they get up in a very strange way. So maybe two, <laughs> all sorts of angles. <laughs> You are a long, long way up in the air on one of these bastards. <laughs> Over the centuries, writers and poets have sung the praises of the desert for its beauty and mystery. But personally, I can't see what they're on about. It's bloody hot, full of insects, and there's nothing to see but sand. A bit like being in one enormous dog toilet. As for the camel ride, well, it was a bit like being in Lawrence of Arabia, except with slightly less chance of getting taken hostage by the Turks and ritually sodomised. Not that my arse could have hurt much more by the end of it. I want to get off. Ow, 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 ow. Back of the seat. Ow, ow, ah, ah, no, 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 ah, stop. It's not even funny. Restaurant. We went to have some tea while the camels rested, and then the band arrived. The band have turned up. I'm going to get them to uh, play a little bit of Marvin Gaye or Al Green to get my camels in the mood. I wonder if they know. Let's get it on. Obviously not. Instead, they performed a traditional engagement song for our camels. Now they were in the mood, and the mating process started once again. This time, I was feeling really confident. But as the evening went on, each time it looked like they were ready for action, they just couldn't perform. So we tried again, and again, and again. We gave it till midnight, but we were obviously getting nowhere. So I reluctantly conceded defeat. I'd failed the challenge, which meant I had to eat two inches of Hurley, my lizard. Tough news, but I hadn't got time to worry about that right now. I had to get on with my next challenge. Challenge four, shag a watermelon. It sounds odd, but actually it is an Arab tradition. In fact, they even have a proverb. A woman for children, a boy for pleasure, a melon for ecstasy. You stick the knife in, carve yourself a hole, Look at that, look at that goodness. <laughs> right, so I'm now going to retire to my tent and make this fruit glad it was born a melon. Right, team. While I was getting busy in my tent, the band formed a semicircle around the entrance and serenaded me and my melon. I think Saida was more interested in the noises I was making. Of course, as a gentleman, I tried to be discreet, but there was quite a lot of squelching and one loud shriek when I had an incident with a pip. I have succeeded where the camel failed. It's Smith 3, Morocco 1. Certainly no worse than some sexual partners I've had in the past. Uh, it didn't criticise my album collection or my home decoration or make me pay for a taxi. Uh, it's not going to plague me with phone calls when clearly I'm not interested. It's just going to go back to being a fruit. Challenge five, surface sand dune. We only had one more day and we had to move quickly. So we swapped the camels for a four wheel drive. I had to get further into the Sahara to find a really big dune. Suddenly realised how horribly unprepared we are. We've got a small bottle of lemonade with that much in it and half a bottle of Evian. <laughs> Emmett, our driver, is having to keep swivelling the wheel to stop us getting bogged down in sand. We went as far as you can get with a car. Only nomads live out in the desert and there are no proper roads. To make matters worse, when we arrived, we were told there was a sandstorm brewing up, so we'd have to cover our heads completely. This goes over my eyes. Ah. 
I thought this was going to be easy, but because I'm not a proper surfer, they wouldn't trust me with a surfboard. Instead, they've gone for a piece of sporting equipment I am well used to, the picnic table. Legs already falling off this one. Oh, I feel like Jesus carrying his cross. I've got to go all the way up there. Oh. With every step, the sand gave way beneath my feet, making the climb even more exhausting than it should have been in the 100 degree temperatures. I bet you wouldn't get so many show-offs hogging the beach in Cornwall if they had to go through this to pick up girls. Oh. I was ready. At least no one was there to watch me make a twat of myself. I began slowly, but then steadily began to pick up speed. I can't open my eyes. I've swallowed so much sand, I can't even swallow this water. I just have to spit it out, it's like drinking gravel. Smith 4, Morocco 1. Get me out of Morocco. But you may be wondering what happened to Hurley, my lizard. The deal was that if I didn't pass a challenge, I'd have to eat two inches of her. The camel mating was a failure, but I just couldn't bear to stick a knife into her, so I decided to make the ultimate sacrifice. I headed off over the dunes, taking my cherry to the camels. Well, I won't be sitting down for a while, but you'll be pleased to know that I gave Hurley her freedom. Not that she returns my calls, I don't know. You give someone a job in television and suddenly they're behaving like a prima donna. Typical. 